Hi, my name is Jesse Diaz. I have been an instructor for 13 years with San Joaquin Valley College. I have been licensed in the state of California for 21 years now, and I have been certified for just as long. I uh, want to tell you a little bit about pharmacy. There's a lot of things people don't know about pharmacy. Um, when you walk into a drugstore and you walk all the way to the back and you see pieces, some people standing behind a counter and those people are working, that's what people know about pharmacy. They just know the retail part of it. There are some people that have had other health issues and they've had to go to other pharmacies and I'll tell you about those in a second. But the retail pharmacy is you either bring in a prescription or a doctor calls you in a prescription or sends it in electronically and a pharmacy technician will take and interpret that prescription. They will bill it to your insurance and then they will fill it with the correct medication. Lots of detail. They have to make sure that it's the right medication, the right strength, the right quantity. They have to make sure all of those things. There are thousands of medications in different strengths, so there's a lot of attention to detail. The pharmacist then checks it off and then they move it on to you. They dispense it out. There is another type of pharmacy that is very closely related to um, retail and it, it, it works hand in hand with it. It's called the compounding pharmacy. Now compounding pharmacies um, are about custom making medications and those medications um, are for people that can't take normal off the counter, off the shelf type medications. Let's say you have a niece or a nephew or a son or a daughter that is allergic to red dye number six. Well, it, if a medication has that red dye number six that comes commercially from the manufacturer, they're not gonna be able to take that medication in its current form. So what a compounding pharmacy can do is they can custom make that medication without that dye. We will take raw ingredients, sometimes even tablets, grind it up, mix it with a fluid or a liquid or a suspending agent or sometimes even simple syrup. Mix it, we will flavor it, and we can get it out to the patient so that it doesn't contain those special ingredients. We can also make pastes, ointments, lollipops. Um, we can make a lot of different things depending on what the doctor needs us to do. So compounding pharmacy, that's a, uh, it works hand in hand with the retail and that's a specialty type pharmacy. Another specialty type pharmacy is IV pharmacy. So there are IV, people that receive IVs either at home or in the hospital. Most of the time you'll see them, um, actually you won't see them. If, if you're in a hospital or someone is in the hospital and you're receiving a medication through an IV that's already pre-made. There was a pharmacy technician that was in the basement, normally in the basement, and that pharmacy technician custom made that medication. Now, when we think about IVs, if you're in a hospital and you're receiving an IV, you're probably pretty sick. So one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that pharmacy technicians that work in the IV pharmacy, they have to scrub in like they're going into surgery they have to wash their hands, gown up, glove up, put mask on, everything. And they have to go into a room that is so clean that the air is triple filtered and go inside of a machine that triple filters the triple filtered air. That machine is called, a, it is called a, a, an IV hood. And that IV hood keeps the air within that machine sterile or as close to sterile as can be. We want to make sure that any virus, any bacteria that is on us gets washed off, cleaned off, and that we don't introduce anything into that IV bag. Because if someone pours dirty water on your arm, nothing's going to happen to you, right? You just wash it off. But we have to think that our skin is the protection and this IV is going past the skin. So any little thing, especially if you're already sick, can make you sicker. Another thing that we do um, going to the IV is we make chemotherapy. Um, chemotherapy, everybody knows that chemotherapy is used for cancer. 
Um, but the thing about chemotherapy is it's kind of a, a drug that acts on the whole body. Um, it makes people really sick. It will make the technician sick if they're exposed to it. So the technician has to be very, very careful. They wear sometimes wear special equipment. They use special machines uh, to create that particular um, compound. Chemotherapy is a very specialized skill. So chemotherapy. Another thing, and this is growing in 2021, mail order. Um, I know there are a lot of big companies and you probably see TV commercials all the time. Your parents, your wife, your husband, whomever, if they have a health plan, a lot of times that health plan will have them give their, um, have them fill prescriptions through mail order. Mail order is bulk filling and they use pharmacy technicians for that. Um, so pharmacy technicians will be more in demand with the increase of the mail order medium. Another thing that uh, is starting to come into uh, play with the current pandemic is issuing vaccinations. Walgreens and CVS are primary points or pharmacies are going to be the primary point of distribution for vaccines to the general public and pharmacy technicians are going to be right in the middle of it. It remains to be seen whether pharmacy technicians will be giving injections or not, but they will be closely related in maintaining stock, um, maintaining, making sure that the, the medication is stored safely. They will be right in the middle of that. Pharmacy technicians are frontline workers. Pharmacists are frontline workers. If you're interested in helping people, pharmacy technology, pharmacy in general is where it's at. Everybody goes to the pharmacy. Everybody gets something from the pharmacy that needs help, that needs something. So make sure that when you're choosing a career that you do what's best for you but look into pharmacy technology. Thank you.